I've had a love-hate relationship with running for as long as I can remember. Uh, I've been into running for a long time, then out of running for a long time, and then more recently, trying to kind of practice what I preach to get back into running. So this past year, I've tried to dip my toe back into the pond, and I've showed up in a few of the races. And last year at the Tele 10, uh, it was the first Tele 10 I'd run probably for more than a decade. And there were people that came to watch me that didn't even recognize who I was. Now I felt healthy, but I said, not again. So this, uh, I hope that they recognize me when I pass the finish line. I'm sure I'll pass the finish line this year. So um, what I do for a living is uh, one of the heart doctors here in the province. And as you can imagine, there's no shortage of work in Newfoundland for heart doctors. Um, and to make a long story short, I feel like I'm here preaching to the choir because we see very few runners coming through our operating rooms and our cat labs and in the CC and so on. So, so you guys already get it. But the problem in Newfoundland is that we have a lot of people that don't get it, right? Just as an example, the average age that a man will live in BC is 81 years. And the average age that a man will live in Newfoundland is 77 years. That's four less years of life, predominantly, not because we got weird genetics, but because we smoke more and we don't exercise as much and we have more diabetes and obesity and so on. So clearly that's not a problem in this group, but that is a big problem for us in Newfoundland. So um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about running and the heart. And I certainly heard about that fellow uh, that died. I don't know any specifics about his case, but I do have a familiarity with young people that die suddenly. Fortunately, that's extremely rare. If a young person dies in Newfoundland, and you know, he invariably they'll have an autopsy, and if the autopsy shows nothing, and there's no explanation, and this happens maybe about one in 10,000 people, then they'll be referred to me, and we'll start the kind of the detective journey of trying to figure out what happened. So, you know, when a man who's 35, who obviously is very fit, dies in a race, there's a lot of questions that are asked, and and if you look at around North America, there is a very small instance of people, very healthy people, that die in a race. So why is that? First of all, the risk that this is going to happen is really, really low. One in a hundred thousand people that run marathons. So, so these stats are as good as you can get them. So they analyzed all the marathon runners across North America, got about 10 million runners. And of those, they had maybe 50 or 60 people that died in that race. Now, to make a long story short, most of those people, as you can imagine, were people that had never seen their family doctor, probably had undiagnosed heart disease, might have had a heart attack during that race, just like they had heart attacks at any other place in life. But, but what I put down there underneath is we see far more people who think they're Wayne Gretzky playing recreational hockey that drop dead. I mean. It's not infrequent that we see one of those people come to our back. You guys are far more healthy than those people. But at the end of the day, you gotta be sensible. And I think that if you're over 40 and you wanna jump in and start getting in shape and run a marathon, probably you better get to know your family doctor a little bit better. Okay. We'll talk about that in a second. So, the hard steps. What's published, what's the science, what do we know? First of all, for the women in this room, that you're at much lower risk for dying during one of these marathon or half marathon events in men. About a quarter of the risk, actually. So even though for men it's very small, one in 100,000, women are about a quarter of that risk. 70% of the people who have their heart stopped during one of these races don't make it. To be honest, that's not too bad. You might think that sounds pretty bad. If your heart stops on Water Street, you have a cardiac arrest, what are your chances of surviving that today if that would happen? It's really low. It's only 5%. And there are the stats generally in North America. So for anyone out around, and you're not next to a hospital or not next to someone who's immediately going to start CPR or an ambulance, it's only about 5%. So the fact that 30% of people survived is pretty good. It means that they had appropriate medical care, they had AEDs, they had bystander CPR, and all that stuff ready to go. So if anything, if something happened to you, your chances of collapsing in a marathon are better at surviving that than they would be if you were just walking in the water. So I guess I'll put a plug in for bystander CPR. Those of you guys that haven't done 